Good morning. Good morning. It's a beautiful day that the Lord has given us. Amen. Amen. We thank God for his blessings, for allowing us to be here today. And then first we want to say to all of our fathers, Happy Father's Day. Amen. Amen. Happy Father's Day. And the word of God says, He shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Malachi 4, 6. So we want you to know that on this beautiful day, this beautiful Father's Day, we want to recognize and think of those fathers that are alive and even remember those that have gone on home who made a personal impact on our lives. Amen? Amen. We, it is our intent today to bless the Lord. Amen? For he has blessed us in so many ways. Amen. Amen. We are so happy to open up this morning with our men singing this morning. And I'll tell you what, you are in for a great treat today. And therefore, those of you that are watching, those of you that are listening, we want you to get into the service. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to allow the male choir to open us up this morning in song. Amen. Let's give them a hand as they come.
Lord. Yes, I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I, that I would serve him till I die. And I am on the battlefield. Forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and narrow to thy bones. May God have a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. Let us pray. Father God, we humbly become to your throne. Thanking you, Father God, for this special day. Thanking you, Father God, for setting this day aside to honor Father. We just ask, just ask, Father God, that you just allow us the opportunity, Father God, to hear your word, to be doers of your word. We thank you for today. We thank you for Sunday school. We thank you for our superintendent and our vice teaching us your word. Just allowing us to come and discuss your word collectively. Father God, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We just ask, Father God, that you just forgive us of our many sins. And Father God, as we go into this worship, Father God, we just ask, Father God, that you allow it to be what you have said it to be. We just ask, Father God, that you just allow us the opportunity to come into this sanctuary to get clarity and understanding of your divine word. We just ask, Father God, that you just be with the under shepherd that will proclaim your good news. We just ask, Father God, that you would allow him to humble himself and speak to us, Father God, as if he's teaching a child so that we can get an understanding and to be better prepared to go out into a dark world to speak your truth. Father God, we understand that we don't always do the things that's pleasing in your sight, but your grace and mercy, we thank you for it. We thank you, Father God, for being the perfect Father for us to set an example as we prepare to be fathers. We just ask, Father God, to just be with this program. We just ask, Father God, that you just allow us to fellowship from one brother to another. We just ask, Father God, that you just continue to be with St. Mary as we're so humble and so happy 
to see so many members show up today. We just ask, Father God, that you just allow this be an encouraging moment as we prepare, Father God, to come into your sanctuary to worship you in spirit and in truth. We just ask, Father God, that you just allow us the opportunity, Father God, to study of your will, to study of your way, to be an example for anyone who will see our faces, to allow us to be beacons of light, Father God, be like a lighthouse that the only thing a ship can see is the way home. Allow us, Father God, to study of your word, to be able to speak your word to anyone, those who want to hear it and those who don't. Father God, we just ask you just continue to be with us in all churches that open in your name. We thank you. We praise you. We glorify your name. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 I know it's nobody but God. Amen. 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 Come on, Saint Mary, put your hands together. Oh, my, my. I would like to take out a little time and just thank God for the many blessings that he has bestowed upon me. You see, when I look back over my life, see where he brought me from, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I woke up this morning, got out of my bed, and I looked around, here's what I said. Thank you, Lord, for the blood you shed. You put a root up on my head. Day. All the blessings you send my way Could have been dead, sleeping in my grave But you told death to get back and behave Righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. I can count on God, he won't let me down. Always do just what he said. Now, pain and suffering, he brought me through. I'm open wide, always welcome you.
God has just blessed me. I want you all to know that from the depths of my heart, my wife and our family, we just thank you for being in your presence. Amen? God knows how to do things. Amen? And when he does it, he does it well. Amen? And I tell you what, this may acquire, I told them and I told you all, I prayed and asked God to place me in a place where they'll have a male choir, where they'll have men that want to work for God. And God answered my prayer. I am so joyful. I tell you, I, I mean that from the depths of my heart. I'm so grateful just to be a part of this flock. Amen. Ooh, we, another blessing. God knows how to bless us. Amen. And for those of you, as I said before, happy Father's Day. And there are so many wonderful fathers. Amen. And we want to celebrate the fathers. Amen. Because many of you know that in many cases, we have, as men, how do I say it? In many cases, we fall down. We have not stepped up to the plate that God has placed us to be. If you read the word of God, as I said before, God made man first. Amen? And he left man in charge of everything. But as you know, and I know, we as men have not done what God told us to do. But I want to celebrate the men that are doing what God has asked you to do. Amen? And women, we thank God for you too. Because you have encouraged us in many cases, to be who we are and what we are. And for those of you that may not have a father, or you may not have had a male in your life to encourage you, I just want you to look to the hill from whence comes your help. And all of your help comes from God. Because at the end of the day, God got it all anyway. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a glorious time in the name of the Lord today. Amen. And it's not my intent to hold you long, but I do want to say something to you that God has given to me. And if you have your Bible, and if you would turn to Luke, the 15th chapter, verses 11 through 13 and 31 and 32. Luke, the 15th chapter. And for those of you that can stand and will stand for God's word, we'll love for you to do so. Luke 15, verses 11 through 13, and then verses 31 and 32. And even as you look at I encourage you to read all of those verses, verses 11 through 32. But I just want to just read a little bit of it. 
And many of you know this parable anyway. That Jesus actually said. Amen? amen. And if you have it, say amen. amen. And if you allow me to read it for you. And Jesus had already been giving other, giving other parables as well. But he's going to give this one here. And it reads as follows. Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Verse 13, not long after that, the younger son got together all he had and set off for a distant country and there squandered his wealth and while living. Squander, he wasted. Then verse 31 and 32. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Amen? Amen. May God have a blessing on the readers and the hearers of his divine word. Amen. Amen. If I may use just for a topic or a message or a thought for today, a father who can. Let me say it again. A father who can. Let's all say it together. A father who can. Hallelujah. And God knows we have a father who can do anything. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and today I just as we prepare to celebrate, as we celebrate the men of the church and the men everywhere on this Father's Day, I just reflected on the fact of how God blessed us even when we don't do the right thing. Amen? Amen. Amen. But not only that, he blessed mankind each and every day. Even in light of what, we go, what is going on in our lives right now, we have a father who can. Amen? Amen. And, and, and even as I said to you, I, this parable, and many of you know it, and, and some of you may not know it, but if you have your Bible, read it, because there is a message in the parable. And Jesus, let me, let me just, just kind of paraphrases this, this parable that Jesus had. Jesus talks about there was a man who had two sons. Many of you know. One of the sons, as it said, was a, the was a youngest son, but this young son one day went to his dad and said, Dad, look, I want everything that's entitled to me. Now, he, being a Jewish boy at the time, under the Jewish law, you were not supposed to get your inheritance until dad died. But this son went to daddy before he passed away. I want mine now. And the father, a loving father as he was, he decided to give his young son what he asked for. The older son stayed with him. And the Bible went on to say that this young son, when he went to his dad and got what he wanted from him, he took off. He went somewhere else. They say the Bible says he went to another country. And when he got there, he did what many young men would do. He partied like it was 1999. He had a good time. And the Bible even went on to say that not only did he, he party, but, you know, when you are out there partying, there are always going to be other folks who are going to come and hang with you because you got something. Amen? And therefore, they want to be around you. So as long as he had the wealth, they were hanging with him. But the Bible went on to tell us that just like anything, it all ran out. He found himself, he was by himself in a strange land. And he didn't have any money to buy food. 
So he found a job. But the job that he found was a job that most Jews would not have even taken. That was a job to feed pigs. And that was, that was an insult. But he knew he had to eat. So therefore, he did like many of us. We're going to do what we have to do to sustain ourselves. But the Bible says that even as the pigs were eating, he got hungry. But he didn't have any food. So he desired to eat what the pigs had. The Bible went on to say that there were others who were working, and, and he, just paraphrasing, he, he desired to eat what the pig had, and they wouldn't give it to him. So he was still hungry. But the Bible went on to say, like many times, he said that he finally came to his senses. You know how we do. We act crazy so long until we realize you know what? I've lost my mind. The Bible went on to say that he thought to himself that I'm going to go back to my father and tell my father I have sinned against you and to heaven. And would you take me back? And if you take me back, you can hire me out or I can be just like one of your hired hands. Because he knew that his father's servants were eating much better in many cases, they were eating as well as the, the owner's son. So he went back home. The Bible went on to say that the father saw him coming. I can imagine he was just like any father or even any mother. When our children leave and go astray, y'all pray all the time for us. And he prayed for his son. And God answered his prayer. And because the Bible says that when, when, when the son was coming, the father actually ran to him, or they ran to one another. And he grabbed the son, and he kissed him, showing that they love. And he went on to tell one of his servants, go and get a robe. Go and get a, a ring and put it on his finger. And, he, you know, he's, he was happy about what his son had done. His son had come back home. Bible went on to say the older brother got angry because he heard that there was a great celebration going on. And he said, what's, told one, asked one of the servants, what's going on? Your brother is home and your dad wants us to kill a calf and we're going to have a party to celebrate his return. And just like the older brother got jealous and angry, he, wouldn't want to, he didn't want to go to the party, and, but the father went to him and begged him to come. He said, well, you never did that for me. You know how we do. We look at what's been done for somebody else. But the father told him, even as I read the scripture, he said that what? But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost. And he is found. That's all God wants us to do. No matter what we do, no matter where we've been, God will take us back with open heart. Amen. Amen. He don't look at the mess that you're in. He look at that you have changed your heart and decided to come back home. Amen. Because he's a father who can. Glory be to God. Then you say, Pastor, so What's the significance of that, of a father who can? I'm glad you asked me that. Do you need to know this? First of all, the first thing that a father can do, a father can forgive you. In this parable, we found that the father forgave his son. Amen? Not only so much that he forgave him, that he loved on him. Amen? The Bible says, even in Ephesians 432, it says, be kind and compassionate to one another. But it goes on to say, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you. God has forgiven us of our sin. That's what a father would do. 
And I'm pretty sure an earthly father does that, which is good, but our heavenly father does it daily. So not only will a father can forgive you, the second thing I want to share with you, a father can love you. Glory be to God. A father can love you. And many of you can reflect on, and even now, those of you that have fathers, or those of you that have had father, how your father loved on you. I remember how my father loved on me. And I missed him greatly each day. But I'm happy to know that my father was saved. And because of his salvation, I am elated about it, just like many of you are. My young people, I want to tell you, if you have a father, tell dad, I love you, dad. You know, we don't say that much. We don't like to use that word love. But I like to use it because God is love. Amen. And he loves us so much. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world. Glory be to God. And see, when you love somebody, you'll give them something. And God gave his best that we may live. Amen. So not only will a, a father, will he forgive you, not only will a father love you, but your father will save you. My earthly father couldn't save me, but my heavenly father does, has already done it. Amen. A father who will save you. And even as we looked at this illustration, I thought about Paul and Silas. They were in jail and had been wrongly arrested and, and there was an earthquake came. The whole prison shook and the, 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 the prisoners that were there, their shackles came off, the jail doors flew open. And Paul stood up and Paul out and said, everybody's still here. Jailer, you don't have to worry about anything because the jailer knew that. If anybody escaped, he was going to be executed. The jailer was so overjoyed, the jailer was so touched that he went to Paul and said, Paul and Silas said, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? Paul told him, all you got to do is believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not only was that jailer saved, his whole family. See, isn't it good to know when you are saved, you ought to want your family to be saved. Glory be to God. Amen. You ought to want them to be saved. And, and, and this is what the Bible is saying to you about a father who can save you. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he went to the cross, he died for you and for me. Amen. In fact, if, if, if you look at 1 Corinthians, the first chapter in the 18th verse. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter in the 18th verse. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. See, when many people, when we talk about the cross, they are totally clueless. Amen? But it says, but for us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Glory, glory be to God. For us that are being saved, it's the power of God. God can save you. God will save you. All you got to do is trust and believe in him. Glory be to God. Amen. So I want you to remember, on the very special Father Day, a father can, who can forgive you, a father who can love you, and a father who can save you. And even now as we prepare to open up the doors of the church. Amen. Whosoever will. If there's anyone today that are, that's in the audience. If there's anyone that is viewing. That would like to have a fellowship with God. This is your time. To come while you have the blood flowing in your veins. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Come on, brothers. Glory be to God. At the foot of the cross. All you got to do is just go to the foot of the cross. Amen. You can just do, do like the woman who had the issue of the blood. 
She touched the hem of his garment. And she what? She was healed. There's power in the blood, church. I keep telling you, all you got to do is just try. Let the There's love at the foot of the cross. There is love at the foot. The doors of the church are open right now. Yes, yes, it is. You just lay down your burden. Just lay down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody going through something right now. All I want you to do, all I want to do is encourage you. Just lay it down. If you got some anger, lay it down. If you got some hate, lay it down. If you got some disappointment, lay it down. If you got some sickness, lay it down. At the foot just of the cross. Lay down and then when you lay it down, burden. just turn around. Lay down and leave it there. Your way. And I guarantee you, lay down God will bless you. Everything. everything. There's no limit on God. Hallelujah. 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 Just lay it down. God. There is at the foot Somebody needs some joy right now. Somebody needs some joy. There is joy. Maybe he said he didn't do what he was supposed to do for you. But I want to share with you. you we got an earthly, a heavenly father. He just wants you to come to him. Amen. He'll be all you want him to be. Not only all you want him to be and more. At the foot of the cross. But you got to leave it at the cross. You got to leave it at the cross. You got to lay it down and leave it. There is healing at the now, You can't lay it down and go back and pick it up. You can't do that now. When you become saved, you're leaving everything. Sometimes you got to leave your family. But that's all right. God said, I'll be everything for you and to you. Yes, God. Lay down everything. Everything. Hallelujah. Church. There's salvation at the foot. Do you want to be saved? If there's somebody here today, you want a relationship with the Lord? Come down. The Bible says, Jesus said, if you be ashamed, be. To own me before you men, I will be ashamed you to own you before my Lord. I'll be ashamed of Lord have mercy. Lay down everything, everything at the foot of the cross. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you, sister. Is there another? Is there someone else who wants to come today? Come on, lay it down. Come on. Don't come to church and then take it back on with you. Today may be your day. Today may be your last day. Maybe your last day. But isn't it good to know that if you lead a day, you got a relationship with the Lord. Lord have mercy. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 For prayer, amen. Praise. Okay.
Amen. You want to say anything? Or you just want us to pray for you. Get a mic, brother uh, Gibson. Okay, she she's okay. She's okay. Lady Hughes, come up here. Amen. Yep. Okay. Amen. God bless you. Okay. No, no problem. <laughs> God bless you. Have my wife coming up here. We're gonna church. We're gonna pray for. Her. Amen. Amen. Let us bow here. Oh God. Our God. Our Lord and our Savior. God, we thank you for this day. And Lord, even now as our sister in Christ has come for prayer. Oh Lord, we lift her up before you. Believing and trusting that you're going to do a mighty work in her and through her. And God, whatever is going on in life, Lord, I know you'll let her know that all you wanted her to do is just lay her down at the foot of the cross. And when she leave it there, walk away, and walk away and be content to know that it's been done. Oh God, we bless her right now. Not only her, we bless her family, Lord. We want her to know that the blood does still work. And there's power in the blood. So whatever is going on with her, God, I believe that, that you're going to take care of her. In fact, I declare and decree blessing and healing on this sister right now. Not just her, God, but others who are going through situations as well. We bless them as well, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. We glorify you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed, sister. God got you. Hey, leave it at the foot of the cross. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, brother. Amen. Amen. As we get very close to closing today, God placed it in my spirit. Many of you may have read or heard the announcement. I ask that every male of St. Mary please come to church today. I wanted to anoint you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know it's men day. Of course I want to anoint the Father but I want to anoint every male because our males are being attacked daily. The devil wants to sift you as we. But God has told me it is not so. Therefore, we are going to anoint you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we would like for all of the males, if you will stand, those fathers and sons that are together, you can come together. Brother Tillman is in the back, one of our ushers. We're going to start on the left-hand side. We want you to come back, come up, follow his direction. We're going to anoint you, allow you to go back to your seat. And once the anointing has taken place, we're going to have a prayer for you. Amen. Amen. Over on my left hand. Right here, brother. The Holy Ghost. You may go back to your seat. Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God bless you, brother. Watch this.
anointed. Jesus was referred to as the anointed one. Amen. anointing here on brother, brother Douglas Spann is for not only Brother Spann but for his son the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost Douglas Jr. Musicians, amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, dear God, we thank you. Not asking for anything, but just thanking you. And God, even now, as you have allowed me to anoint the bells of this church not only the father but all of the males of this church God we thank you God I, I ask in Jesus name I declare and decree in Jesus name blessing on each and every one of them and then God even as I saw some of our young men and boys that that came up, God, as I said before, they're being attacked daily. 
For God, I know you. There's nothing too hard for you. Therefore, we turn them over into your hands. That you will continue to bless God and keep them each and every day of their lives. We just thank you, Lord. And then, Father, we ask and pray for those that are sick and shut in. Lord, look upon them. Oh, Lord. We just bless you. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. At the foot of the cross. At the foot of the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Allow me to read this to you. A godly man. A man of godly character has a heart that is steadfast and true. He has a deep and ever increasing love for God and for all mankind. A man of godly character has a mind that is filled with the knowledge of God. He longs to learn and apply the truth of God's word. It is clear to me that you are a man of godly character. God is working in your heart and mind for his glory and for the benefit of his people. For all my men, happy Father's Day. A godly man. A godly man. As we um, prepare to close, I just want to just say a few things. We got four minutes. We thank God for the celebration of yesterday, June 10th, historically, day for African Americans. Amen. It was so long coming, but look at God. We got to wait on him because his time is not our time. His ways are not our ways. Amen? But well, we thank God for historically what has happened. Amen? And it happened for all African Americans, even though, it's, as we said, it was celebrated in Texas throughout the world. It was celebrated. So we thank God. We want to remember the, the Ford the Empire family as well um, as they are going through their situation. We are elated to have Mother Meyer, our eldest member of the church with us. Won't God do it? Amen. Amen. We are so happy that she's here. Um, we also want to encourage you. Those of you that have not been vaccinated, vaccinated, please get your shot. And if you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for your loved ones and others. Amen. We are living in some critical times now. So please, I want to encourage you to get your shot. I um, want to remind our minister leaders, uh, we have a meeting tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock here at the church in the sanctuary. All of our minister leaders, please come. We want to talk about reopening the church fully. It's open anyway for anyone who desires to come. Amen? want to remind you, uh, and encourage all of our mail. Our brotherhood meeting is Saturday morning at 8 o'clock. We want you to come. We want men. We want to learn together. We want to love together. Amen? Remember, God put us in charge. Amen? So we got to do that. Amen? And then we have a, a special um, announcement that Sister Moore would like to make at this time. And even as she comes, we have a um, video at the end of the service. I want you to watch it with, as we celebrate our men. Amen? Amen. Go ahead, Sister Moore.
God bless you. Amen. <laughs> We'd like to thank the youth ministry along with the youth for uh, what you've done and what you're doing right now. And even now as we prepare to close. And we have so many members of uh, St. Mary here. Um, I want to introduce, I am Mary. I have my wife with me, sweetheart, stand up. Hey, man. She's put up with me for 45 years, so I thank God for her. Amen. Um, many of you know that our daughter um, has breast cancer, and uh, she's been spending a lot of time with her. A daughter came home, but she has not had her second shot. She would have been at church with us, but continue to keep us in your prayer. Amen. For we all are going through some issues in life. But I do know this. God is able. I know he's able, and he's already, not only has he showed up, he showed out. Amen? Amen? And therefore, we bless his holy name. Finally, the male choir, the music ministry, Sister Tillman and all, God bless each and every one of you. Amen. Amen, because you sung from the depths of your heart. And I know God is pleased with what you've done. And those of you that are at church today, you know we want to see you back now. Amen. Amen. Because God wants us to be together. Amen. As I say always, forsake not the assembly of believers. Amen. And then tell somebody else that you had a blessed time at church today. Amen. And then we are salt of the earth. Y'all know that, don't you? And therefore, God expects us to tell the good news. And if God has done anything for you, you want to tell it. You want to shout about it. You want to glorify his holy name. Would you stand at this time as we prepare to close? Amen. Finally, again, fathers, happy Father's Day. Hope and pray that they are prepared a good meal for you. Or they'll take you to a good place to get something to eat. I know that chicken has died that I may live. So I'm going to get him at the end. <laughs> Go ahead, Brother Smith. Um, just, just a reminder that we have a special pre video presentation for Father's Day. Yes, yeah. we do have a video presentation. Again, we want you... You'll be able to show it. It's many times we have not been able to watch it in, in the sanctuary, but if you stay for just a few minutes, you'll be able to see a special presentation for Father's Day. Let us bow our heads. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. For we know that you are a Father who can. Therefore, we bless your name. And once again, God, we ask that you continue to bless fathers. So many make so many sacrifices for their family. Keep them in your care, Lord. And Father, we know that you gave your only son that we may live. And therefore, we thank you, Lord. And even now, God, even on this special Father's Day, use us to be the servants that you have called us to be. To tell men and women, boys and girls, about a Savior. And God, we know that our ultimate goal and test is to be kingdom builders. Every one of us are servants. And therefore, let us proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because he told us, even in Matthew, to go into the highways and byways and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you. We bless you. We ask this all in Jesus' name. And the church says, amen. Amen. God bless you and God keep you.